Okay, here is the uh, capacitor that I replaced. That's the 005 600 volt. And I replaced it with a 0047 600 volt that uh, is right there. And that's where that capacitor is. That's the 56K resistor that's in series with it. And then that yellow wire is the wire that goes on down to the short slide. So now what I'm going to do is set up to test shorts again and make sure that the new capacitor works. And that's, by the way, why I stopped at this point to show you that, because my normal practice is to only install one component at a time and then to check the circuit to make sure that I haven't introduced an error. I found that to be a lot easier in the long run rather than replacing all of them and then finding out the thing doesn't work and wondering which of the changes I made might be responsible. So give me a second to put this back on the tripod and close the unit up and we'll check that shorts function one more time. Okay, we're ready to go again with the shorts function. And once again, I'm going from pin 8 to pin 3. And you see that the light does come on right here. So the replacement works fine. And I feel a lot more comfortable with it than the other capacitor that was in there. So now that completes the recapping on this DynaQuick. And I'm going to pause here because I have an order in for some 4-pin uh, tube bases because I'm going to replace the 83 tube in this tester with the solid state equivalent. And so that'll probably be my next segment is showing you how I do that. Before I uh, go on to the replacement of the 83, I thought I'd show you what I wound up replacing. Uh, this is the 250 microfarad capacitor that was across the meter. And then those are two paper capacitors that I replaced. The one at the bottom is that one that's not shown on the schematic. Then I replaced three of the 250 volt electrolytics. So I thought I'd show you that how this tester is used. You, uh, you set the voltage for the filament here, and then you plug the tube in to the appropriate socket. In this case, it's a 6U8, so that's the socket. Then you set the sensitivity to the numbers there. 76 is test 1, 56 is test 2. Now those numbers are also shown in these books that come with the DynaQuick testers. These are different editions of the same 650 books. So I have it in the short position and as you can see there's no lights. I'll put my hand over the... You see there's no shorts. So the, now that I know there's no shorts I can go to test 1. Now what I'm going to do is raise the sensitivity until the tube just barely tests good. Just right there. And if you notice, the sensitivity is at about 80. Uh, actually it's 82. So now I'm going to go back to zero. And I'm going to go to test two. And remember, this is a dual section tube. So test two, and now I'm going to raise the sensitivity once again until the tube just barely tests good. Just right there. And that's right at 60. And if you remember, it should be about 56. Now that's not off too much. And this may be a perfectly good tube. The reason is this tester hasn't been calibrated in probably 40 or 50 years. And I've replaced a number of capacitors and I've replaced the diodes that uh, supply the screen voltage. And I'm later going to be replacing the 83 tube. The diodes that supply the screen voltage are the two selenium rectifiers that are shown there. Uh, one of them here and the other one down here. Selenium rectifiers, when they fail, they release sulfur dioxide, which is rotten egg smell. So you don't ever want a selenium rectifier to fail, and they do after about 40 or 50 years. So 
I'd like to replace them with silicon diodes, which is what I've done. And I'll be replacing the 83 tube later, and only then will I try to calibrate this. By the way, there are some really good uh, tips on BNK tube testers that you can find at a place called tubesound.com. This is an article on the BNK 700 and 707, but as the author points out, the uh, uh, what he talks about here applies to the 650 as well. The difference is the socket layout is different. So in here he refers to socket 1, for example, which on this tester is an active socket, but on the BNK 650, socket number one is actually way up here in the corner, and it's a spare. So uh, it's not wired in. So obviously you have to pay attention to that kind of thing. But this is a pretty good website for tube testers. In fact, this guy knows a lot more about tube testers than I probably ever will, uh, and I find it a very, very useful resource. So anyway, see you when we get started on replacing the 83 tube, and I'll show you how we do that.